The army has rescued five of the dozens of students abducted from a girls' school in Benin Kebi on Thursday. One teacher has also been rescued, but a student was found dead in the forest. Those who were rescued were freed after an exchange of fire in the early hours of Friday. A teacher says more than 80 students were taken despite warnings of a potential attack. In the last few hours, we've come across the kidnappers. Uh, they came to our blocking point and um, we've engaged them uh, early hours of this morning. Uh, at that point, we have, they have abandoned five of the students and one of the teachers. Unfortunately, I think we've lost one of the, uh, one of the students. I want to raise a song to praise my God for keeping us alive and also for giving me the courage to withstand whatever is going on because my husband is one of the kidnappers that they went with. Joining us live to discuss this is Adeya Misaka, a security analyst. Good evening, Mr. Saka. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for joining us. So the yeah, news, yes, the news we have is that out of about 80 students abducted, three teachers, um, five have been rescued, one found dead. How do you react to this news? Well, uh, for me, um, <clears throat> excuse us. It, I think it's um, it's the cherry news that yes, we were able to rescue some of the adopted students. But let's get something clear. I, uh, you, uh, you, you probably know my opinion. I've shared it on your platform a couple of times. We've rejected this system. We've changed service chiefs like twice. We've had two, two sets of service chiefs. We're still combating terrorism, and it's on, it's on abated. It's rather increasing. And now, what is the question? Of where does this, where is, where is the failure of security? If you look at this KB incident, um, for two weeks, there's been a trail of it. There was, a, there was an attack, there was an adoption of policemen and what have you. And there's an NSA sitting in Abuja. That has not come up with anything. I think as, after the adoption two weeks ago, the attack or probably attempt two weeks ago, I believe the security at that level at KB State should be, should, be, should be at the highest point. Kepi borders Zamfara and Sokoto and Niger. We know how much Niger and Zamfara has been dealing with that, uh, abduction and kidnapping and banditry. Any right thinking security expert, analyst, intelligence officer, NSA, we probably have been called, we probably now will be coming up with these points or series of intelligence analysis preempting attacks. And these would have stopped. But this will probably reduce the way that our military action is reactionary rather than precautionary. And again, if, if we are smart enough and we have intelligence analysis to work with, bankable intel to work with, that would, have, that would end up reducing the combative and the non combative collateral damage, like one of the other guys. That would reduce the combative collateral damage in the part of our, of our personnel. So we have to keep asking ourselves. Why are we, what are we just, why are we beating around the bush, just going around in circles and not getting to any destination? As we speak, Zamfara, Kebi, Niger, and by extension, Karina, should be a militarized zone. And in a militarized zone, how do you want to tell me that kidnappers move the large numbers of students without, without encountering, yeah, they certainly encounter the checkpoint. In a militarized zone, should probably have what's called surveillance. That is not in place. And there's a huge budget to the office of the NSC. And the man is sitting down there doing nothing, not giving the, the military guys on the field possible intelligence to work with. He's not continuing the intelligence community. We are losing men. We are losing Nigerians. And Mr. President is still keeping faith. It is incompetent. So, Mr. Saka, in this particular case in Kebi State, we spoke to the police PRO in the state, and he mentioned that they had gotten prior information, intelligence that, you know, bandits might strike and their men had been stationed at some schools in the state, including that particular school. But the unfortunate thing was that they were overpowered by the uh, bandits. So I don't know, wh whose fault did you say that is? Saying that they had already put efforts in place to forestall the attack, but it failed. Well, you said let us correct this thing. We should not stop, we should stop this watered down definition of these guys. These guys are not bandits, these guys are terrorists. These guys are activists of Boko Haram. I don't know why, I don't know why Nigerians, 
journalists and everybody is embracing the word bandit. These guys are tourists. And these, 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 these are cells of Boko Haram operating, they've extended their center and um, their area of concentration away from the Northeast. And they're now in Northwest. So, for me, it is not an excuse. Yes, they could, but you cannot cover, if they are, but it's not an excuse for, but let's say they cannot cover the whole of Kedi. They would have, you know, we would have foresaw this thing if there was a surveillance in place. And you cannot tell me you had intel that they were coming to attack you. And all you do is just, you, you see, in, in this, there, there's something called a roving patrol and, and a, stationary, a stationary patrol. All they had probably in, in Kebbi that they were stationary um, same patrol in places. There was no roving patrol. And to, to make the patrolling easy, you need an air surveillance. What are all the beds we have there? In, in, uh, that's why some of us are clamoring for the improved air wing of the army and what have you. How many beds do they have in, in, in the sky that night or that day? You cannot tell me one of four for a terrorist attack and there's no air surveillance in place for recon. All right, I, Mr. I, I, I was never in the DSS training school in Bauchi. I was never, I, I, I never got, I've never been to um, NDA. If I can know this as a Nigerian, as, uh, as what I've, well, as, as a Nigerian that I read, then what is the NSC doing? So, Mr. Saka, you're saying that um, you'd rather, uh, you know, advocate for militarization of these zones rather than paying, you know, ransom for the release of these children. If, if this zone is militarized, that means you probably have, that means each presence of military. It, it doesn't necessarily mean the suspension of democratic laws and what have you. It gives the interest of military, roadblocks, command posts and what have you. And his prayers of and operation, surveillance and counterinsurgency, and with that, it won't be easy for these Kiban stories to strike. But why is Kedi, why is Zamfara, why is Niger not yet a militarized zone? And Katsina? This thing is not rocket science. It's, it's, it's painful when you come, to, you, you hear on the news week in, week out. Nigerians are being kidnapped, some are even being killed, ransoms are being paid for criminals that should be in body bags. All right. Um, we, we should stop making a joke of our nationhood. L lastly, Mr. Saka, how do you think this would impact on education in Nigeria, seeing that the high number of out-of-school children is as bad as it is in the north? Well, it's not just even about education, unless we want to deliver ourselves. I don't, I'm not trying to do a process of them. Yes, it's going to have a negative effect on education. It's going to have a huge impact on, on food security. If you are not careful, the food shortage that we this country around August, September will be enormous. It is so high. Because people can't even go to the farm. Zanfara, the freedom of Zanfara is uh, farming is our pride. How many people can go to farm in Zanfara? How many people can, the whole of um, taking power, so you get to the whole of Niger State. It is known for yam. How many people have gone to the country to cultivate yam? Benway, Benway is a, is a no-go area. We want to analyze this. So it's not just on education. It's even on every. It affects every sector of our lives. And the government must wake up. You've you've rejected the system, but what it hasn't happened. They keep changing. They change the NSA. It's simple. Let's start from there. All right, Mr. Saka. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming in and joining us on the news this night. You're welcome. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.